Hello everyone, in this week's tutorial I'm going to be covering the new EV3 lights from Mind Sensors. In this video I'm going to talk about what the Mind Sensors lights are, I'm going to show you what's included in the box, and I'm also going to show you how to program them as well as uh, demonstrate some techniques that I've um, invented that you can ex use to expand your experience with these lights. Now the EV3 lights are a product that Mind Sensors has just released, which is convenient because it's the holiday season. And as you can see, I have my tree right here, all festively decorated. Um, now, as far as what the EV3 lights are, it's really self-explanatory. They're a flexible ribbon of LED lights. Uh, the ribbon itself is about one meter long, and it's controlled by an EV3. It has its own separate power source, which I'll go over in just a second. And like I said, it's controlled by the EV3. So there's a little control unit, and you plug it into a sensor port on the EV3, and then you can program it in the EV3 programming language. And Mind Sensors provides a block that allows you to change the color between one of three colors, red, green, or blue, on the EV3. Now, of course, you see more than three colors here, and I'll also be discussing how to do that later in this video. So these here are the components for the EV3 lights. There are three components included in the package. This is the ribbon of LEDs. These are the actual lighting elements. And um, like I said, it's a meter long and it's flexible so you can bend it in any shape that you like. Um, it's relatively thin and it's got each of the LEDs going down it. And of course, this will be coiled more neatly when you get it in the package. Mine's just a little bit weird because I've used it already. This right here is the control unit for the LEDs. Um, this is the plug for the EV3 um, where you'd put an EV3 cable and you'd plug this into a sensor port on the EV3. This right here is the power input. It's a barrel connector. So you can plug in any power input that has like a, a barrel connector on it. Um, there are a lot of options there and I'll explain that in just a second. And this right here is where you would plug the LEDs in. And you'd plug the LEDs in so that one of the LEDs would be facing inward on the board. If you put it in like this, where the LEDs are facing out, the lights won't um, well light because it would be the wrong polarity. So you can plug this in like that. And then this right here is the power supply that's included. This is a 12 volt power supply that plugs into a standard US outlet. And um, this is nice because uh, you don't have to worry about batteries running out or anything. You could just plug it into a wall and you have unlimited power. Now, the one disadvantage of this is, of course, you're tethered. You really can't make a mobile robot if you're going to be plugging your LEDs into the wall. So what I suggest, and this is what I personally use, is I got a 9-volt battery with a barrel connector, and you can plug this into your control unit here for the power input, and this works just fine. Um, I have a specific one that has a switch, and this is nice, but you can use any 9-volt battery clip with a barrel connector. Now, um, in terms of using a 9-volt, normally these lights run on 12 volts, but I haven't noticed any discernible difference in brightness using a lower voltage, 9 volts, as opposed to 12. The other concern with a 9-volt is current draw. Um, I'm not exactly sure how much current these lights draw, and of course, um, a 9-volt doesn't really produce a lot of current, especially compared to a wall outlet, and this specific transformer included in the package um, I believe is 1500 milliamps. Um, that's going to affect the longevity of your lights. I haven't yet made it through an entire battery, so no comment on how long the battery should last, but um, uh, this is an excellent option because I haven't seen any dimming of the lights yet due to battery drain. So definitely consider um, powering your lights off of a 9 volt if you'd like to stay mobile and untethered. So now I'll go over the programming of the Mind Sensors EV3 lights. You're going to need Mind Sensors um, programming block, which you can download off of their website. I have a link to the product page in the description box below this video, so you can check that out later. But after you've downloaded the block and installed it into your software, this is what you get. Um, there's one mode, control, and there are several options within that. Um, there's I2C address, which you can adjust, but you really don't need to adjust. This, for the most part, really just leave this alone, because it's already set up to where it needs to be. Here you can also set the color um, to one of three colors, red, green, or blue. And like I said, originally they only give you provision for three different colors, but I'll explain how to get more than just three in just a minute. You can also uh, change the intensity from 0 to 255, 
where 255 of course is maximum power and zero is completely turned off and then this right here this is a logic output that tells you whether or not uh, the program was successful in lighting the lights so this is just basically how the program works um, like I said you could change the color between red green and blue and change the brightness now I want to go over some additional things that you can do with your lights in the programming to expand your experience this is what the three standard LED colors look like on the mind sensors lights this is red green and blue so here's my little trick for getting more than three colors on these LED lights and the way we do this is by putting out red, green, and blue blocks in such a way that we can individually adjust the intensity of the red, the green, and the blue element so we can make any conceivable color. Now, this is the concept behind how um, LCD screens work. Like I bet the computer or tablet or smartphone that you're watching this on right now uses this very same principle where if you have just red, green, and blue lights, if you vary the intensity, you can make any color you like. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to take out three blocks back to back to one another. The first one we're going to set to red, the second one we're going to set to green, and then the third one we're going to set to blue. Now this is very important that you do it in this order, red to green to blue, because if you put these out of order, like if you put blue before green, it's not going to work correctly. And um, the reason behind this is as you're going from red to green to blue, you can set the red's intensity first, you move on to the green, you set the green's intensity. And by that part, you're mixing red and green and then you can also set the blue intensity um, if you put blue before green it's just going to break the chain um, it has to go in this order otherwise it's just going to light blue um, now the next step would be to adjust the intensity of each um, uh, light the red the green and the blue right now the red is at zero which means the red is off and then the green and the blue are at max power so this is going to give us that nice cyan color which is kind of like um, in between blue and green if we were to put the red at max power as well we'd have all three and this would give us a white if we were to turn the green down to zero um, we would get red and blue just lit up and this would give us magenta and you can keep experimenting with different colors and like I said you can adjust each of these from 0 to 255 and the exact number of colors that you can get is somewhere in the 16 millions I don't remember the number off the top of my head but in this way this is how I get different colors such as uh, orange and magenta as you see here um, and like I said there are so many different colors that are possible now after you have these blocks set up in this order red green and blue you can highlight it all and you'll be able to compress it into a my block and when you're done it should end up looking like this. This is the my block that I've made for my mind sensors lights. Um, it's basically just these three blocks that are compressed together and you can input your light value from 0 to 255 for each one and you can make whichever color you wish. And so that's the trick behind getting different colors with your mind sensors lights. So next I'm going to go over how I get my lights to smoothly pulse on and off. Now, of course, you could opt to just have your lights flicker on and off where they're just completely off and then they go full power completely on and then they go off again. But I prefer to have my lights smoothly pulse. So they, they start at a low power, they speed up in terms of brightness, and then they very slowly approach a brighter um, light. And in this way, they kind of have a pulsing motion as opposed to just on and off as if they were blinking. And I accomplished this using a sign function. And this is especially cool if you've seen my Thundersmart video where I put um, these lights on and use them as underglow neon and it has a cool pulse effect. So this is the program that I use to smoothly pulse my lights on and off. I'm not going to go over step by step how to build it but I'll show you what each part of the program does. First you're going to want to have a variable and set it to zero. You can name it whatever you want but I have this set as count and this is what's going to kind of uh, facilitate the pulsing of the lights on and off. Next you're going to want to read this variable count and then multiply it by 180 and then divide by pi which is 3.1415 blah 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 blah. The reason we do this is so we convert count from radians to degrees because degrees is going to give us a smoother pulse because it has a smaller resolution as compared to radians. Next what we're going to do is we have an advanced math block which I have it set to A times cosine of B times C plus D. Now this probably looks like a lot of really complicated math 
and some of you might want to barf. Um, but as long as you have at least um, a kind of loose grasp on how sine functions work, you'll understand how this works. A, of course, is our amplitude, which is how bright and how dark we want the lights to get. Um, D is the midline. Uh, for all intents and purposes, you're going to want your midline to be 127 and your amplitude to be um, 120. So in this way, your lights will get to full brightness and they'll go down to... Um, minimum brightness which is zero and um, like I said this is the amplitude and the midline together are going to be setting what your maximum and minimum values are C is your functions period which is how um, quickly it's going to pulse and of course a larger number is going to make uh, the function pulse faster and I have it set right now to pulse I think um, once about every half second which is a rate that I like and then you take this result and you're going to set it as the intensity level of the LED light that you have chosen. Now, as of right now, I've only figured out how to do this with the primary colors, red, green, and blue. I don't know how to do it with the um, block that we created last time. And it gets kind of sticky when you use this block for the pulsing function, because this block will kind of quickly light all of the lights, uh, red, green, and blue, individually, before it sets to whatever color you want. And since this is looping really quickly, you're really just going to end up getting flashing red, green, and blue, not, say, magenta pulse like you'd like. Um, anyway, so after that, you set the, the light intensity. You're going to go all the way back here, this variable count, drag it on all the way over here, and increment it by 1, and then write that as the new value for count. So each time you go through the loop, the value of count increases by 1. And then set your time weight. This is another way that you can set the speed of the pulsing, and I have this set to 0 0.03 seconds. And of course, you're going to want to keep looping back around. And each time, count increases by 1, and that's going to vary the brightness of the lights sinusoidally. So kind of like in a wave type function. That's the best way to describe it. One final note is that if you combine the pulse function that I just showed you with some color changing, you'll get this, which is a really cool party light, which smoothly transitions between different colors. It's not exactly random. You can kind of predict what color is coming next, but it'll hit pretty much all of the different colors as it cycles through. And like I said, it smoothly transitions from one color to the next. Thanks for watching my tutorial this week. If you found it helpful, be sure to subscribe for more tutorials like this every week. And if you have an idea for a tutorial, be sure to submit it in the comments section below. Thank you, and I'll see you next time. Bye.